Summer Slam. This year, it's on a Saturday in July. The last Saturday in July. I know, crazy, right? But a lot of things have happened since WrestleMania. You know, you had Money in the Bank, you had Hell in Cell, you know, all that. And then coming up, you know, next month, well, actually, not next month, it'll be the first real big Saturday of college football, which will be Clash the Castle. I'm not going to talk about Clash the Castle. Um, at all, but I, I just wanted to, you know, get that out there. Uh, but be like, yeah, this is a, this is a thing that is happening. It's gonna be out there in the UK. It's gonna be a big one. Uh, there are some implications, you know, coming up this weekend for Clash the Castle. We'll talk about all that. But first things first, we gotta get the big elephant out the room. Vince McMahon has indeed retired from the WWE. He it, it, it is because of some things that, um, you know, he paid hush money for um, some favors, uh, some explicit favors. And we, and we know, you know, don't get me wrong, Vince McMahon is a pioneer in the WWE. He's a pioneer. He is a revolutionary when it comes to professional wrestling, sports entertainment, whatever you want to call it. Still a terrible human being, however. He's still a terrible human being, you know. But don't get me wrong. A masterful 40-plus years of the industry. The, like, WWE is still the biggest company in the world as far as wrestling goes. And, you know, now with Stephanie McMahon, Nick Khan, you know, in charge of the front, Triple H, headed creative, you know, it won't be too much impacting this show because, again, you know, things things got a little weird, you know, the past week or so. But now, it seems like things are pretty much set up to where we, we got some stuff brewing. Uh, so the first matchup I'll actually talk about is going to probably take place on SmackDown. I think it's going to take place on SmackDown. It'll be Drew McIntyre, Sheamus, uh... That is the number one contenders match for Clash the Castle. I wish that would be on the pay-per-view itself. If it gets moved in between now, you know, it's unlikely that it'll get moved from SmackDown to the pay-per-view in between now and, you know, then, but that, that, this, this is definitely setting up Drew McIntyre to face Roman Reigns at Clash the Castle more than likely. Don't get me wrong. I would love Sheamus to have, you know, a, a title opportunity. Like, dude should have, like, another title opportunity right now. But, I mean, because, I mean, he's just one of the best workers in the company. I mean, he just, he just one of the best wrestlers in the company. I mean, man's always does what he needs to do. You know, Sheamus does. But I think Drew McIntyre needs a win in front of a live crowd. I thought, you know, I thought it'd be, you know, he'd be beating Brock Lesnar in front of a crowd. But that did not happen. Uh, if we had to unify the championships... Uh, and we'll talk about Brock in a minute here, but you know that—that's that. that. Um, a matchup that might get added to the uh, to the show is Gunther. I hate calling him Gunther because it's really Walter. It's Walter versus Shinsuke Nakamura for the Intercontinental Championship. And the Intercontinental Championship hasn't been defended at a premium live event or a pay per view since WrestleMania. 37. It's been mostly defended on SmackDown. Don't get me wrong. You know, got the... That boy, that boy can wrestle. We, we know Shinsuke Nakamura can wrestle, but we know Gunther. That man can wrestle. Boy, that is a monster in the ring. Chop him up. So that that is probably going to be like one of the only matches that get added to this card in between now and Saturday night. Um, you know, Back at WrestleMania, Roman Reigns beat Brock Lesnar, winner takes all, undisputed champion, you know, the undisputed WWE Universal Champion, and now Roman Reigns is the Universal Undisputed Champion, and, you know, Reigns has, you know, for for the most part, he's been kind of kept quiet, you know, during this time, because I mean, there's really nobody really to challenge him, because a lot of guys get injured. Randy Orton got injured. Uh, we'll talk about, you know, a guy in a minute here, you know, that has, you know, it's part of a storyline, but, you know, you know, injuries are about there. And I thought, you know, we all thought, you know, 
for a minute that it was going to be Randy Orton at SummerSlam. You know, maybe Drew McIntyre clashed Castle. Something was going to happen with Riddle and probably Money in the Bank or whatever. Uh, but instead, you know, things got changed. Now Reigns beat Riddle on like a, a SmackDown episode or whatever. Uh, you know, and then Lester Lester came back because I mean there there was one other option, and we'll talk about that other option too. You know, uh, for another you know match down the line. But this is the last man standing. Hopefully, this will be the final time these two face off Brock Lesnar on Reigns. I don't know. Uh, I've kind of bummed out on seeing this, you know. But, you know, it is what it is. Uh, I'd rather see, you know, some things happen now Now that Vince McMahon is gone. And I, I predicted I, I predicted that, you know, I, I thought, you know, maybe Reigns would lose the title at 38, but I don't think he's going to lose it until 39. You know, and that was my initial thoughts. But now, with Triple H running things, things could definitely change. I could see Reigns losing anywhere from he could lose it. He could lose at Clash the Castle. He could lose the title at Clash the Castle. He could also lose it at WrestleMania 39, which I'm thinking, you know, or he could lose it in between, you know, maybe like Royal Rumble or something like that. I'm still thinking it's gonna be Reigns versus Rock. You know, the Bloodline thing. Uh, I know that's a I know that's a big possibility there, but I mean who knows at this point. So uh, yeah, hopefully this is you know WWE says it's their last match, but who knows if it's actually going to be their last match? I, I I hope it is. It's a last man standing. Let's hope it is. Uh, you know. Next up is a um, interesting one: Pat McAfee and Happy Corbin. You know, Pat McAfee been, you know, he, he's been on a tear on commentary, and he's he's been calling out Baron Corbin, and it's pretty hilarious. They were both uh, teammates in the NFL. It, it, it's it's pretty funny how this this is definitely going to be an underrated matchup because we know Pat can actually you know get down in the ring, you know, like some other you know you know celebrity. You know, non wrestler guys can get throw it down in the ring, actually. I, I mean, it's crazy. We'll talk about another specific guy in a minute, but uh, yeah, so Corbin McAfee, that's gonna be real intriguing there. Um, you know, it's just a regular old match, nothing too serious. Bobby Lashley Theory, honestly, you know, this is a matchup that I could do without, like. Really, the thing with Theory right now, and this this Vince McMahon leaving affects Theory, um, you know, because it seemed like McMahon was, you know, pushing Theory towards the top. You know, he has the Money in the Bank beer crease, um, which I don't think he really deserved because I mean, Money in the Bank, you know, again, the Money in the Bank itself, I didn't really, you know, see, you know, somebody coming out and. You know, I could see somebody coming out, and you know, now that I think about it, now I'd have to go back and look at it. But I mean, again, this matchup is kind of a waste of time for the U.S. Championship. We all know Bobby Lashley is going to retain this. This is more, you know, about theory. You know, his money in the bank briefcase, what he's going to do. You know, you know, if things push comes to shove at the main event with Reigns and Lesnar. That's really, you know, it there. Uh, the Undisputed Tag Team Championships, yeah, the, the Tag Team Championships were unified as well, which is a great sign. However, the bad sign is, is WWE still doesn't have really any tag teams, so the Usos, the Street Profits, they're, it's another rematch. Um, and, you know, at the last pay-per-view, you know, at Money in the Bank, you know, it seemed like, you know, uh, Montez Ford's shoulder never got pinned. He never got pinned. I don't think he got pinned at all, but I mean, it is what it is. And the L was took it. Uh, personally, I think the Usos just kind of retained, but the big, the, the intrigue here is Jeff Jarrett. Jeff Jarrett, not only is he doing this, he's all, I believe he's also going to be at the Ric Flair last match uh, show the next day. So that's going to be real intriguing. 
you know, there. So we'll see what in the world happens, you know, with this match. Because, I mean, there could be all sorts of different possibilities. And I do think, you know, I think Triple H can revitalize the tag team division a little bit. You know, there's some, definitely some tag teams there that could, you know, put on some bangers. You know, we don't have to just rely on Uso Street Profits um, versus New Day, you know, you know, Chapter 97. I think we can do with that. I think we can build some tag teams, WWE, and I think that's a good thing. Lynn Morgan got the money in the bank. Immediately cashed in against Ronda Rousey, who's just been underwhelming since she came back. And I do not know why we continue to push Ronda Rousey down. I mean, it's just, it's just not it. I, I don't understand people actually, you know, cheering for her. You know, I believe some people are cheering for her. You know, when it comes to these shows, you know, like Raws and SmackDowns, and whatever. But this is for the SmackDown Women's Championship, and Liv Morgan, you know, finally, who's finally gotten, you know, the recognition she deserves, you know, like, definitely one of the more underrated, you know, uh, women's wrestlers, uh, who really hasn't gotten a lot of chance to shine, at least in my opinion, you know, because, I mean, I think she can wrestle, I, I've, see, I've seen some matches of hers, I think she can, you know, put on a good show in the ring. But I mean, Ronda Rousey is just boring to me. Like this is just this is just not it, fam. This ain't it, you know. And you know, another elephant in the room. I'll just talk about it right now while we're talking about the women's division. You know, Sasha Banks, Naomi walking out the women's tag team championships gone. You know, Vince. You know, again, this is another consequence. You know, of Vince McMahon. You know, the tag team division in WWE for the women's division, you know, that, you can scrap that championship now. Please throw that championship away and never bring it back. But Sasha Banks is gone. Naomi's gone. That is huge. I hope those two, you know, maybe they could go to AEW. Because, uh, I mean, AEW's got, they got things cooking over there in AEW. They got things, they got some things cooking. And I think they, I think AEW, you know, could use them. Please, please. Please get the boat. Because, I mean, AEW, uh, they have some problems of their own, you know, that I'm not going to talk about, you know, right now. But, yeah, the women's division got really, really impacted by this, you know, happening. You know, like, nobody won't, I, I genuinely do not want to see Ronda Rousey. I genuinely do not want to see Charlotte, you know, anywhere near the title picture. And Charlotte, I don't think she's appeared in quite some time, so... You know, it is what it is, but I just don't want to see, you know, those two specific women hit the rig, uh, you know, you know, take it up from other, you know, younger, talented, beautiful women superstars that I think can put on some bangers, you know. <laughs> it might not be five-star bangers, but it may be three, four-star bangers. Whew! But, a big, but the next matchup here, you know, Bianca Belair, Becky Lynch... Rematch of you know a matchup that happened you know last SummerSlam and one that has been brewing you know you know since WrestleMania and everything like that you know because I believe I believe they faced off at WrestleMania I forgot already uh, but Bianca Belair who's been the Raw Wins champion for quite some time now since WrestleMania at least. Uh, Got a lot of momentum on her side. Really shouldn't have lost the championship at SummerSlam. You know, last year she should have lost it at WrestleMania. She, like, I, I think, you know, she should have lost it at WrestleMania. But the big thing is Becky Lynch's downward spiral. Her downward spiral over the past few months has been uh, intriguing to watch, to say the least. It's been intriguing, you know. You know, I genuinely remember, I don't keep up with Raw and SmackDown like that. I, I do like watch highlights and whatever and you know react to tweets and stuff like that but the way they did Becky Lynch over the past few months that is brilliant that is actually brilliant stuff right there also fuck Kevin Dunn bitch ass <laughs> but um you know Becky Lynch Bianca Bella we know this we know this match is gonna you know be a banger we know it's gonna be something good so there you go there up next is the uh, the Logan Paul Miz thing, yeah, it's happening. Logan Paul signed a contract with WWE. He's got a deal for multiple matches. 
uh, multiple pay-per-views and whatever. And this is con a continuation of, you know, some stuff that has happened over the past, you know, not what, what you know, like several months, maybe even a year. I know I know this had something at WrestleMania, but I've forgotten WrestleMania off the top of my head at this moment for whatever reason because, I mean, it's been like three months. But uh, this one... This one's gonna be, you know, a little weird. I'm not gonna lie. Um, we know Ro we know Logan Paul can throw it down a little bit in the ring, but I mean, uh, is this gonna be enough? Is this going to intrigue me enough to watch it? I I I, I think I'll keep my eyes on this match, but I mean, honestly, this might be a bathroom break type match. Last up for the time being. The Mysterios, you know, Rey Mysterio celebrated his 20th anniversary of the WWE at the Judgment Day. Damian Priest, Finn Balor, and Rhea Ripley on the sidelines. Now, the only thing that matters here is probably the return of Edge. I know people have been saying, oh, well, Bray Wyatt's coming back. He's not. He's not. <laughs> Stop it. Unless Trips, you know, get something, you know, brewing, I, I don't think my man's is coming back. I would love for him to come back, but I just don't see it. But I think, you know, the way the Judgment Day, you know, betrayed Edge over had, you know, uh, quite, uh, not not too long ago, actually, you know, in which Finn Balor, you know, helped Damian Priest and Ray Ripley betray Edge. And, you know, I thought I thought that was a little too early, but I mean, it is what it is. Um, I, I really have no thoughts on this match either. It's kind it kind of just got put together at the last minute because I mean, you know. <laughs> Judgment Day beat the mess out of Ray and Dominic. I mean, you got Ray Ripley throwing. Th uh, did she throw uh, Dominic Mysterio around like a rag doll? It's crazy, man. Crazy. The last piece of the puzzle is Seth Rollins. Again, his matchup with Riddle got canceled due to storyline, and it might get moved to Clash the Castle. So who knows? So that's another, you know, big matchup at Clash the Castle that we could be seeing. Uh, I'm not going to talk about Clash the Castle, but, you know, keep that in mind. Who in the world do you get Seth Rollins in the face? Because, I mean, you know, if it weren't for, you know, you know, WWE, you know, actually convincing Brock to come back, we would have had probably Reigns versus Goldberg. And I don't want to see Goldberg. I really don't want to see Reigns Lesnar again, but we're seeing it again. So the question it is, is who in the world do you get Seth Rollins to face? Because I mean, somebody, he's got to face somebody. If if it's the story, if, if the storyline, you know, you know, like they mix that in like the next two days, uh, in like the next 48 hours, and then, you know, Riddle and Rollins is going to be, you know, a match again. I mean, um, I don't know. I genuinely don't know. We'll, we'll see. Uh, but I mean, there's tons of possibilities. Like AJ Styles, who, has, who hasn't done anything uh, I mean, a hot minute. Uh, Ricochet, who hasn't done anything in a hot minute. Uh, I would say Tommaso Ciampa, because he's, you know, he's probably going to be associated with The Miz for the Logan Ball match. Uh, you know, uh, who else? Kevin Owens. I mean, the possibilities are endless. Or alternatively, that also could have Edge being factored in, you know, with Rollins. Because they, they had a trilogy last year, and that was a absolute thrilling trilogy. You know, Cody Rhodes ain't going to be, you know, ain't going to be there, you know, for quite some time. So he'll be back, probably Royal Rumble, maybe. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. I, don't, I genuinely don't know what in the world's going to happen with Rollins because he needs to be on this card. Some, some, some form of, of Seth Rollins needs to be on the card. One of the best wrestlers in the world needs to be on this card. If he's not on this card, you know, come Saturday night, I'm going to be livid, you know, because I mean, whoever he's going to have a matchup is going to be an absolute banker. So, until Saturday night, 11 p.m. probably, uh, we'll be coming back this week to do football. Then, you know, a big major update in the spring leagues on Sunday so see y'all this weekend take care good night and good day